Um, well, my name is Stephanie Jordan, and um, I'm here today to talk to you about the Grief Recovery Program. Um, my journey with the Grief Recovery Program started in a bathroom, kind of. Um, so my husband had, um, Steve, he had gone through a lot of losses in his life, and at some point he found the Grief Recovery Program, and um, he had gone through it, he had changed a lot, and I, and he had this, the book here. This was in our bathroom. And um, I would like sneak in and like look through it, like what's he doing? And, um, he even became a specialist because of the impact it made in his life. And you know, I'd, he would say things to me, and, but he was gentle and I would sneak in there and just kind of read things. So that's kind of how it started for me and, and just reading through um, this book and asking myself some questions, which I will share with you um, towards the end, that, that really helped me see, wow, I think I'm going to give this a try. Um, so we will start by talking about what is grief. So what do you guys think of? What, what's a good definition of grief? Loss of someone, yeah. What else? It goes beyond sadness to a deeper, pervasive sense of sadness that you can maybe move past potentially, always. Yes, good. good. I think it's a um, process that we emotionally go through and suffer the losses. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think it's like the emotional consequences of this kind of adjustment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point. Loneliness? Mm -hmm. all great they all make this really deep picture um, and the grief recovery Institute and the community we kind of use this working uh, definition here I'm old school I like paper so I don't have, I have one of those I just like to write on, on the board it's the teacher in me I guess but we talk about um, conflicting conflicting feelings Caused by, oh, and I, you guys have a, a paper, right? You can write this down if you like. Caused by an end or change. Change in familiar patterns of behavior. Familiar patterns of behavior. Okay. Why do you think... It, we would use the definition conflicting feelings. If there's grief, if there's loss, how can there be conflicting feelings? Because uh, there can be joy and sadness. Right, there can be. Like, think of maybe a new job. Um, you're excited about your new job, but you're going to miss your other one. Or um, maybe it's the opposite. You really miss your old one, and now you got this new crappy job, and, you know, but. But there's an end, there's a change, and you're gonna have more than one emotion sometimes, even with a person, even in a death maybe, or an estrangement, there's gonna be good and bad feelings you have. So um, this is what we talk about here um, in the community. Uh, first, um, you can go down to point three, I think I decided to switch it around. But I wanted to explain to you what the Grief Recovery Program is. Um, I have a right-brained example, a description, and then a left brain example. Um, I am a right-brained person, um, mostly, but I, I'll start with the left brain one here. Um, wow, I took up all the space. I don't know if I was going to write it on here. Okay. Darn it, and I forgot to start my timer. Sorry, Michelle. Um, okay, I guess I'll go to this page. Um, so, for the left brainers. Uh, this is the only evidence-based grief program that is out there. Um, the Grief Recovery Institute went with, uh, worked with Kent State University, I think, and um, did some research on it, and it's, it's evidence-based that it is a great working program. Um, it is eight weeks long. Yeah, so it has a, a beginning and an end. Um, and in, in that seven to eight weeks, seven if you're one-on-one, -on -one, you can work with a specialist like me or Steve one-on-one. -on -one. 
Um, Steve does it with um, people on uh, over Zoom um, or in person, or you can work with a small group, no more than 12 people. And what you do is through different things, you, there's some education in part of it, and we talk about the myths of grief, and um, we'll get to that in a second. And then you also um, use some tools and you pick a relationship in your life that is causing you grief and you process that through what I will share soon. And then you graduate, then you're done and you have tools for the rest of your life to, um, because you have more grief, you will have more losses as we all will and you'll be able to use those. There's also um, a graduate uh, four weeks where you don't need the education anymore, you got that the first time, but you can process more relationships with people. Um, so, there's your left brain example. Here is your right brain example. Okay. So this is my brain. Wait, I don't think it should have that dip in there. Okay, these are all the pathways in our brain. And um, grief is kind of, to me, it was like, it's this really, deep cavern, you know? It's like really deep, and if we went a little bigger here, it's like this, and you're down here. Oh wait, that's really tall, hold on. Forget that guy. This is you, <laughs> this is you down here. This is this is your grief, you're, you're really deep, and it's, it's really dark down there, you cannot get out. I mean, it's, it's, it's really far. And you just have this way of thinking, you might repeat things in your head. You might replay like, um, I can't believe I did this, or you know, she did that, or he did that, and you just you play it over and over, and it just gets you upset and pain over and over. Um, or just thinking, oh man, I remember that. That was so great, and I miss it, and oh, you know, and you just you just can't get out of the thinking. Um, but to me, the grief recovery method was something that. Um, you were able, it's like over here now. This is kind of the bigger thing. And this is it. And you're up here. And you're like, you're in this whole new place. Like you can look over and go, oh, that was a terrible time. I remember that pain. And like you don't forget it, you remember it. But you're not like deep in it anymore. You're over here and you're like, I can see. Like it's, it's a good path now. And I'm on, a new, I'm on a new pathway over here. You know, it's not deep, it's just, just where you are and you can see the old thing and you remember it but now you're over here and you're thinking you're on a new pathway and it's something hard to really explain but I, I just think about that coming over here and like oh yeah so much better over here um, so with that um, the first part of the grief recovery program the eight weeks we talk about education um, because a lot of times in life we are all uh, taught to acquire things right get an education and learn a lot of knowledge. Um, buy a house, get cars, get clothes, you know, family, get spouses, get kids, you know, we, we, we build, build, build. Um, but we weren't really taught really well how to lose those things. Um, so, um, we don't want to never mind. What, all of you have probably heard about stages of grief, I'm assuming. That was Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, and she actually was studying terminal cancer patients when she did that. And she turned out to be friends with um, one of these guys, John James, who started the grief recovery program. And she said to him, she kind of regretted how that's gone out of control, because there's no one way to grief. We don't go through certain stages, like in an order, or maybe none at all, or just one of those things. And because those, that was a very specific thing that she was studying with terminal cancer patients. Um, and we have lots of grief that aren't terminal cancer patient related, right? Um, so that's one of the things is there's not one way to do it. Everybody has their own way to grieve. And it's, you don't wanna judge somebody else. You don't wanna judge yourself. Like, am I doing this right? No, you're just grieving because Everybody is different, and, and we got to honor that. Um, now, the things that we have gone through. That's what we're going to talk about next. Um, they say there's about 40 different kinds of losses that we can uh, go through. So I'd like to uh, brainstorm that. Can you guys think of 
different kinds of losses, and I, I put them in tangible or intangible categories. So what are some things you guys either have been through or you just know people have, people lose? Breakups. Breakups. So relationships. Okay, what else? Job loss. Job. I'll put that over here. Okay, what else? Mental stability. Ooh, mental stability. Okay. Yeah. Death. Moving. <coughs> Moving, yes. Yeah. Security. Yeah, loss of safety and security. Kids growing up with Yes. Ooh. Is that tangible or intangible? I would say. Empty. Oops, not empty tangible, empty nest. Yeah. What else? Illness. Yes, your health. Anything else? Routines. Oh, routines. Loss of routines. Financial. Financial. What about pets? Yes. Divorce. Divorce. Yeah. Childhood. Childhood. That might go with loss of safety, maybe. Loss of trust. So as you can see, there's just a whole lot. There's a whole lot that we lose. Um, and you may want to, I think I let give you a space. Um, you can star ones that maybe right now in your life, they're kind of right there, you know, you know what they are. Um, now, whether you've been through, well, when you've been through these or other people have, what are some really dumb things that people have said? Or you've said, and you, afterwards you're like, I can't believe that just came out of my mouth. These are, these are the things that we think in society help us through grief. Yeah. I've heard people say, uh, are you, are you going to be finished with that? Or are you, like, when are you going to be done with that? Right. Like, time will heal it, right? Time. Time will heal. Yes. Yeah, like, you've been grieving for, like, it's been, like, three months. Aren't you done? Right? Yes, could be worse. So you shouldn't feel bad because it could be so much worse. Don't feel bad. That's that's true. Yeah. Can you say that again? Sorry. You getting comfortable in your grief. Oh, okay. Getting comfortable in your grief. Like you're not doing it right, type of thing. Um, what else? I know how you feel. Oh, right. Um, no one knows how we feel, do they? No. What hurts you makes you stronger? Yes. Um, I'm going to put that under here, be strong for others. Be strong for others. Be stronger, it's good. Let's be really strong. What we want to be in the society. Yeah. Glad you had a good mother. Look at the blessings. Look at the blessings. Which is, again, like, why should you feel bad? It was such a good thing that you had, right? Yeah. I think the idea that, like, any form of mental health is linear. So, like, if you relapse, like, oh, I thought you were better. Like, yeah. I thought you were over this. Yes, very good. Another thing with the time. Um, yes. Replacing the loss. Get another dog. Have another kid. I've even had someone tell me I, I suffered. We suffered a, a loss of a uh, a baby once, and someone told me, "Well, at least you can drink now." <laughs> I don't. I didn't drink at the time. It's like, you know, like, what are you talking about? Um, at least what else? Like, like, at least say with God now. At least they're in a better place. Like, mm -hmm. language. Yes, very true. Um, 
I have this one here. This, how, parents out there, have you ever told your kid, you're crying, I don't wanna hear it, go to your room. Mm -hmm. I've done that, sorry. Um, <laughs> we, we, we're teaching our kids from a very young age to go grieve alone, yeah. you know? I don't wanna hear your problems, go grieve alone. And I know different losses I've had, I like to go cry alone. Yeah. I don't like to just bleh in front of everybody. Yeah. Um, and maybe if I did that more, maybe I, my mental health would be in a place where I could, I'd feel more open to expressing feelings, you know? So that, that could have been a part of it. Um, what else? Oh, I have a last one. Do any of you, what do we tend to do when we are having loss? Do you like to do something instead of thinking about your loss? Self-medicate. Yes. So this goes under here, keeping busy. And that could be through self-medicating, through drinking, et cetera. We'll get to that in a second. Um, so the, we, we've been taught, and I, I remember one recently I was driving and I heard something on the radio, and I heard even the DJ was like, yeah, you know, just... They, they were like talking about these things, or they were just telling the, the, the audience and perpetuating these myths. And I was just like, wow, it's even on the radio. Like, it's just all around us, and we just don't know how to grieve. None of these things help us take the right steps to heal our grief, right? So, um, now we're going to, I don't think I have it on there. But your next area, it says STIRBS, short term energy releasing behaviors. These are some of the things we do to keep busy. These are things we do when we do not want to deal with emotions or grief. Um, can you guys think of some things? We, we talked about um, self-medicating. Um, we self-medicate through alcohol. Exercise. Through exercise, yes. Food. Food. Work. Work. Extracurriculars. Yes, extracurriculars, hobbies. You can be really self-destructive. Like some people go to like sex and drugs and stuff. Yeah. Yes. That's a good point. Some of these are obviously really destructive. Um, alcohol, drugs, pornography with the sex. Yes, those are very destructive. But then you have exercise. Like, that's good, right? Um, some of these things can be really good. Hobbies, like somebody said over here, extracurriculars. Those things can be fine. But the problem in grieving is that if you are doing them to avoid the pain, then you're not helping yourself. So even something good like exercise and volleyball or whatever can cannot be good and we call those short-term energy releasing behaviors because yes in the short term they help think about like all of these things we've heard or said over life and imagine like a steam kettle and normally kettles have the little open things right for the, for the gas to come through but when we grow up like this it's like we put a cork in it and we have that heat and every time we go through something people say dumb things we think these things to ourselves, like, I should be happy because he's in a better place, you know? Then we're just, we're just creating this possibility for an explosion. Um, so basically what the grief recovery method does is it removes the cork for us, and it takes that out, and um, we are able to express it. It's on the next page here. There we go. Okay. So, um, this is what I call the special sauce. And it's, it's the part, uh, it's, it's the method itself. And because recovery from loss, we just take a couple of small steps, right? We just, if you're a griever, and even coming here today, whether you did it for yourself or somebody else, it's like a first step in the direction of healing, whether it's through, for grief or for any, any other thing. Um, and something that we talk about is that our relationships with people are often incomplete. And I, I had a hard time with that when I was going through it and reading it for the first time. Like, what do you mean incomplete? Well, think of a relationship, whether it's from a loved one who died or just you're not in relationship anymore or you are and it's just not good. Don't we, and this is, I think, down in, like, yeah, number six. Recovery comes from identifying and expressing what you wish had been different, what you wish had been better, or what you wish had been more. Like, man, I wish we had spent more time together. Man, I wish you, I wish he had never done that to me. Um, I, 
wish I had been a better this to you. You know, anything. Just kind of like that, what's that button for staples? The easy button. The easy button. You know, like. Yeah, that was easy. <laughs> yeah, just like, just like a button that you could press. Like, I wish it was just different. Um, those are the, that's what you're identifying with, the, with this method. You get to identify those things, and then you get to communicate them. And, you know, when we were talking about that, um, sending kids to their room and expressing the feelings, when I was going through this myself, I had recently, um, like our, our youngest is eight, our oldest is 18. And um, so the little one was, you know, like two or three, and I learned this new parenting method. And it was very warm. And instead of saying, oh, you're throwing a fit, okay, go to your room, I don't wanna hear it, or you're in timeout. This was like, oh, you're upset. Oh, you look so upset right now. That is so frustrating. You need a hug. <laughs> yeah, I need a hug. And what happened? What, it, you know, what's what's happening to you, or what made you so upset? Well, it just, uh, oh. And then Mercy's face would just do this thing. She would be so upset. She got to express it, and then it would melt away, and then she'd like run away. And I was like, <laughs> oh, I wish I had parented like that, everybody. And I put it together with the grief recovery method, like. That's what we get to do. We get to express it, and we get to just kind of move on. Not not move on all the way, but you know, like you just you kind of can let it go when you express it to people. Yeah. It is amazing. Um, so there are um, four parts of this that are part of the method. The first is the lost loss history graph. And on the second side, you'll see. Thank you. Gosh, I totally forgot up here. So you'll see a line. Um, I don't probably won't have time for this tonight, today. But this would be like um, your birth. And this would be today, 10, 16, 21. And it seems kind of dark, like I say here, but. There is something really satisfying about being able to think about all the losses in your life and you get them out of your brain and you put them there on the paper and you can just mark them, you know, just, you know, put hashtags and you just, just label them, you know, and you see them and then you can go, wow, no wonder, no wonder I'm, I'm feeling like I do. It's very normal. I should feel kind of messed up. I've had some issues in my life. Um, and what you want to do is some of these you might not feel anything about, right? Some of them you might feel, oh, that is so sad. That really makes me sad. Some of them you might look and go, boy, I'm really ticked off right now because I remember that, you know? That's one of the losses that you might want to process because that still gives you pain. Um, and some of these could be current. They could be with people who are living. They could be with people who have died. They could be tangible, they could be intangible, but they affect you. Um, and then when you, in the method, during those eight weeks, you pick one relationship, okay? And then you make another graph, a lot of graphing. Um, this is gonna be the relationship graph. So, you do a graph of the first time you met that person. So if this is a parent, this would be birth. Um, otherwise, it'll be, you know, the first time you met someone, and then today again. And you are going to be marking everything in that relationship, both the good and the bad. You put good stuff up here. You put bad stuff down here. And some relationships, you'll be like, I cannot think of one good thing. And we encourage you, there's got to be like one, even if it's like really general, really generic. There's got to be something good. But sometimes it can be the opposite. Like, this person did no wrong. Yeah, everybody does. So there might be one or two or three. Think of three negative things, if you can. Um, something else we have people notice is, do you notice, did you notice like any accidents that happened around the time of this loss, like afterwards? Any, any illness that happened? Any change in that? And just, just look at that. Okay, the next thing we do is we take um, every item that's on here and we give them either apologies um, or forgivenesses 
or significant emotional statements. Okay. Some relationships you might think, I have to apologize, are you kidding me? Um, but yes, in every relationship there's probably some, even if it's a tiny little thing, you know, you could apologize for. And finally is the letter. So you take all the apologies, all the forgiveness statements, and all the significant emotional statements with each of those things, and you put it in a letter form. And you do not read it to the person. Now, oftentimes you cannot read it to the person, but if, if you could, you don't want to. It's not for them, it's for you. And you get to express it, you get to read it in your group, in the, um, the grief recovery group. Or if you do it one-on-one -on -one to the specialist who you work with. And um, you, through doing that, you've discovered the things that you never got to say to them. You really discover some new things because you're thinking, what, would, what do I want different, better, or more? And it's, it's very eye-opening. And, um, and then you get to say it. And the, the, it's now complete. All of that emotional stuff is complete. And sometimes those things you may not have been able to say because they wouldn't let you. Maybe you wouldn't let yourself because you were too afraid, or maybe a circumstance like death or separation made it not possible. But either way, now you get to, and I call it the special sauce because, and maybe the, the people who are academics know really the reason why, but why this works, I, it just, it does, it's, it's weird in that, you mean I'm just gonna write some stuff down, I'm gonna read it to somebody and everything's gonna be better? Yeah. <laughs> it really, it, it's, it's amazing. Um, so I want to wrap up and I want to ask you guys some questions to ask yourselves, um, thinking about the losses that you've had in your life. And you can answer these and, and know if the grief recovery method would be helpful to you. Um, do you feel, or do you desire to enjoy fond memories of a loved one without having them precipitated by painful feelings of regret or remorse? Do you feel like you're not able to fully love people in your life as much as you want to, but you don't really know why? Do you feel like you just carry a lot of emotional baggage? Are you hypervigilant about self-protection to avoid emotional pain? Do you desire to be open and loving and trusting, but you just can't? Like maybe you used to be, but now you just feel kind of stuck? Do you suffer from unexplained anxiety? Like a new all of a sudden. Do you suffer from a physical ailment that has gotten worse over time? Do you keep having the same mental conversations or fights with someone living or dead that they'll never happen? Uh, are you tired of replaying hurtful things from the past where you recreate pain over and over? Do you bottle up feelings, thoughts, and opinions? Do you have an awareness, and this is one of the things for me, and these I came out of the book, but do you have an awareness that your life is just not as happy or fulfilling as it should be? And should as in, what well, you look at it on the surface, everything looks great, this and this and this, like life is good, but you just don't feel it. Um, or is it not just as you want it to be? And, um, that was a big question for me, and that's what kind of what helped me in that bathroom, you know, as I'm looking through things. Um, like, maybe I'll give this a try. Kind of trust the process. So um, I encourage you guys to, to think about those things, too. Um, it is October, so at the beginning of the year, January 8th is the Saturday, that I plan on starting a group. Um, if people are interested, you know, you can get in touch with me. It'll run for eight weeks, so that would be January 8th to February 26th. So let me know if you are interested. And, um, and I think that's it. Thank you for listening. Thank you.